So uh, a topic tonight is association between preconception paternal health and pregnancy loss in the USA an analysis of US claims data. So <clears throat> a very interesting topic. These guys took a huge number of claims in the US, went back and analyzed the health of the men and the health of the women, and then analyzed what the relationship was to the miscarriage risk. Um, if it was a small study, I probably wouldn't make a big deal out of it, but they had 958,804 different pregnancies involved. And so it's an enormous study with very, very strong data output. And so we're hoping to share some of that with you tonight. Are we on? Yeah. And so uh, hopefully you guys will get some information from that that's valuable and uh, we can bring it to everybody's attention. I'm sure many of you are probably at your uh, last minute virtual Christmas party. So if you're not on board with us, you can watch it on YouTube later on. So this study is quite interesting. Essentially, uh, what they wanted to look at was the relationship between the men's health and the outcomes of the pregnancies in terms of was there an ectopic, was there a miscarriage, or was there a stillbirth, or any birth for that matter. And so in order to do it, they looked at, uh, like I said, almost a million uh, pregnancies and they broke it down into what percentage resulted in losses and what percentage resulted in pregnancies. So overall 22% of all of the pregnancies resulted in a miscarriage which is staggering but average at the same time. That's kind of what we expect one in five one in six pregnancies will result in miscarriage so this is right on that margin and essentially what they did was they then went back and looked at whether or not there was significant data in terms of health. So the factors that they looked at were high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease which is fairly uncommon but you're going to see it in your smokers and uh, the people with bad asthma that have not had it controlled. Obesity which is super common. Depression again very common. Heart disease and then they actually looked at a conglomerate of different things which they called the Charlson comorbidity index where they looked at your age, your history of a heart attack, uh, congestive heart failure, peripheral vascular disease, um, any kind of cerebrovascular event like a stroke or a TIA, dementia, COPD, connective tissue disorders, liver disease, chronic kidney disease, kind of everything. It goes on and on and on. So they had this global sort of score that they wanted to look at to see if that was uh, relevant or not. So average age of the population of men was 35.3 years and there was a small percentage, just about 5% or just under 5% that were older than 45. And there was a pretty good correlation between the age of the men and the age of the women in the study. And they did kind of in one part of it sort of stratif stratify by the women's health as well so that you know, we, we knew whether the woman was healthy as well because that's important. It's quite possible that if the man is unhealthy, maybe the woman's unhealthy and that's what's contributing to the, the pregnancy losses. So 23.3% of the men in the study had at least one component of metabolic syndrome. So high blood pressure, high cholesterol, the diabetes, those kinds of things. And in total, they said that there were 785,089 live, or sorry, 809 live births, and that there were 172,995 pregnancy losses. So that's either an ectopic pregnancy, a stillbirth, or a miscarriage. So they then went and analyzed it to see what relationships there were between the men's health and the outcomes. So. They stratify, stratified this by zero risk factors, one, two, or three plus risk factors. So if you look at the ectopic pregnancy rate, which should really not have anything to do with the men's health, very interestingly, if there were zero risk factors, the rate was 1.9%, but when you got to one risk factor, it rose to 26 when you went to two risk factors, it rose to three. And when you went to three risk factors or more, it rose to 3.9. So something that actually makes no biological sense as far as I can think about it, is that they're saying that the ectopic pregnancy rate where the pregnancy is actually outside of the uterus is increased if the guy is less healthy. Now, no one's ever said this before. So this is fascinating and very, very important, especially 
if you are someone that's already experienced an ectopic pregnancy, it may not have even been anything having to do with you. Traditional risk factors are history of tubal surgery, history of tubal disease, previous infection like chlamydia, gonorrhea, smoking. All of these risk factors have to do with the woman herself. This is actually saying it may be the male that's important. When they looked at spontaneous miscarriage, if you have zero risk factors from the male side, 14.2% experienced a miscarriage. If you had one of those metabolic syndrome risk factors, it was 17.2%, 19% if you had two, and if you had three or more, it was 21.3%. So you can see this steady increase in the chances from zero to going to three plus. Stillbirth also significantly increased. Now, thankfully, the numbers are low, but the actual change in the percentage is almost a 50% increase in risk. So 0.91 if you have no risk factors, so under 1% would suffer a, mis uh, a stillbirth um, if there's zero risk factors. 1% exactly if you had one risk factor, 1.2% if you had two risk factors, and three or more was 1.3%. Now, thank God, it's a very low risk overall, but Keep in mind that going from 0.9 to 1.3 is a 0.4 increase, which is almost half of the 0.9, so it's actually almost a 50% increase in your risk. And that's huge. So if you have multiple risk factors in the male, you're actually increasing the risk of stillbirth in the pregnancy. So they then decided to break it down into the individual components. What about spontaneous abortion? What about stillbirth? So they broke that down by the metabolic components again, or the metabolic syndrome components. So they said your risk of having a spontaneous miscarriage, if you have one metabolic component, was 11% increased. If you had two, it was 17% increased. And if you had three it was, or more, it was 24% increased. For stillbirth, it was a 3% increase with one, a 12% increase with two, and a 16% increase when you had three or more. So again, huge, huge numbers. These are very, very important numbers to look at. When they looked at just the total of not having a live birth, 10% for one, 15% for two, and three or more led to a 19% decrease in your chances of having a live birth. So all of these incredibly, incredibly significant statistically. So this is a very robust data set giving us really valuable information. They then decided to break it down by the maternal component. So what happens if the mom had no risk factors at all? but the male did have the risk factors. So if the woman has no risk factors, and this is really critical, this is very important for you to see. 13% risk if you have one male risk factor, zero from the woman in risk of spontaneous abortion. If you have two risk factors in the male, zero in the woman, it's a 20% increase. And if you have three or more, it's a 30% increase. This is solely determined by the male. The woman had no risk factors. Stillbirth is 3% for one, 14% for two, and 25% increase if the male has three risk factors. Again, this is in a woman with no risk factors whatsoever. And similarly, for just not having a live birth, 11% with one, 17% with two, and 27% with three. So huge data set and very, very relevant, important data, because what this is saying is that the male contribution alone, independent of the woman having anything, is critically, critically important with very, very high rates or percentages of increase in risk of these adverse outcomes. So the male is important. It is not enough to just tell the women, go get healthy, go exercise, eat better, do the Mediterranean diet, take the supplements. You actually have to include the guys in that conversation as well. It is a critical, critical facet of what we do. So they also looked at this stratified by age in terms of breaking the women down from, for their age group. So they looked at women less than 30, and they showed that it is still highly significant for the men to have a, an impact both on the spontaneous abortion and on the ectopic and on the stillbirth rates. When they looked at women 30 to 35, 
it tends to have still a significant impact, maybe not quite as much of a trend. It tends to be a bit more sort of uniform across the different um, health categories for men. And when they looked at women who are over 35, you again see this robust increase in the adverse outcomes if the male is less healthy. So super, super important data, very, very critically uh, relevant to everything we do in fertility. So what does this tell you? This tells you that the men are equally important, or at least very significantly important, in a statistically meaningful way, for the outcome of pregnancies, both in terms of ectopic, in terms of spontaneous abortion, and in terms of stillbirth, and just the overall image or, or outcome of no live birth whatsoever. This has been ignored by fertility specialists for far too long. We tend to harp on women, you gotta lose weight, you gotta stop smoking, you gotta stop doing this and that. But looking at this data set, this tells us that the guys need to be spoken to at the same level of intensity, with the same determination, and with the same care and focus because they are contributing to the outcomes in a very, very significant way. So is it a fact or a fiction that the male's health can contribute to the outcome of the pregnancy, it is an absolute fact that the male's health has a tremendous impact on the outcome of the pregnancy. And because of that, we have to focus on that issue as well. We hope that you've enjoyed that part of the show. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We wanna make the show better for you always, and it's critical for us to get that feedback so we know if we are making the show better for you and reaching the goals that we have for ourselves and for our viewers as well. Make sure that you post any comments about this uh, specific topic. We're always happy to go over more details with you and to review these issues with you further if we can help in any way.